I'm Dr. Daniel Paulson, Assistant Professor in the Department of Psychology at the University of Central Florida. Thank you very much for participating in this research. I'm very happy to be a part of this important project with Dr. Dusevania Falcone at the University of Sao Paulo. Like Dr. Falcone, here at the University of Central Florida, we study what it is for someone to be a caregiver of an older adult with a life-limiting condition like Alzheimer's or another form of dementia. This is a very difficult challenge and at a broad social level many millions of families are affected. And the more that we can learn about how these families function and what their strengths are, the better we can understand how to help them. To thank you, I'd like to talk a little bit about dementia and one of the preventative uh, factors that we have identified through research. Specifically, it's called brain reserve. To go back in time and provide a historical basis for this, I would like to talk about a study colloquially known as the Nun Study. The Nun Study involved a large convent full of Catholic nuns who volunteered to participate in research and for their brains to be examined by researchers after their death. And what we found is that among those sisters, some of them when they were much younger, um, appeared to have much more sophisticated word use. They, they formed more complex sentences when they wrote. And we found that those same sisters often developed brains that looked like they should have had dementia, but none of their behaviors were the behaviors of older adults with dementia. And this was an interesting finding, and we've spent a lot of time trying to understand just why it works that way. And this led us to the concept of brain reserve, which has been extensively studied by Dr. Yakov Stern. Uh, in my own lab we've done some work with this, and many, many others. The basic finding of, or the basic premise of brain reserve theory is that as we age, our brains lose neurons, or more specifically synapses, which are the connections between neurons. And as we lose synapses, we begin to develop symptoms of degenerative cognitive disorders, like Alzheimer's disease. And we know that those who start with more synapses more connections between neurons, they tend to weather the ill effects of neurological disorders like Alzheimer's disease a lot better. So that often the brains of people with um, many, many synaptic connections when they're young, um, the, the brains may look like they have Alzheimer's disease, but they do not behave like people with Alzheimer's disease, as was found in the Nunn study. One of the biggest predictors of brain reserve, one of the biggest indicators of brain reserve, is educational background. We have found over and over again that those who are well educated have some insulation, some protection against the development of dementia. For a long time it was thought that the benefits of education for protection against dementias and things like this reflected only that education that people got early in life through middle school, high school, college, up to maybe age 22, 25, maybe up to age 30. But we thought that perhaps a door closed on that. We didn't really know how education attained much later in life re reflected in risk for Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. But some very exciting new research has suggested that, in fact, brain reserve can be modified, and it can be modified even by pursuing intellectual activities, like taking classes for fun or recreation as an older adult. As we age and as our societies become healthier, uh, many older adults are wondering how best to spend their time how to spend their time in ways that can yield benefits for themselves and for their families. And in fact, continuing to be intellectually active is emerging as one of the most
beneficial opportunities for us all as we get older. If you have other questions about brain reserve and how to protect yourself from dementia, please feel free to contact us here at the University of Central Florida or speak with your own health care providers. Again, thank you very much for participating in this research. We're grateful for your time and your effort.